Hello everyone, this is the first video in a Citra tutorial overview. We will be going over how to build your Citra folder emulator to keep it uh, nice and consolidated to a single folder. Um, this is going to be a series of videos going over building your emulator and keeping it all together and packaged in one place. Uh, which we'll talk about later is extremely important. Um, then we're going to be going down the line with our current multiplayer offerings that we are doing um, on the server, which is Monster Hunter 3U, 4U, and Double Cross. Uh, the prerequisite to those videos uh, are going to be to watch this one, which explains everything you need to know about Citra, the emulator, uh, standalone options, not game specific, and um, our zero tier network video. Um, but that said, let's get straight into it. When you are ready to put Citra together, uh, the first thing you're going to do is go to uh, citrasmu.org. Uh, you're going to come to download here. You are not going to do your win or download for Windows or download button here. This will install uh, the emulator into your system files. You want to keep things as condensed as possible. We want it as a portable build of the emulator. So what we're gonna do is go to manual download and then you'll select whatever platform it is you wanna download from. These tutorials are Windows specific, but uh, we have tested this on Mac OS, Linux as well. Um, they work, uh, but this video is Windows specific. So once you have downloaded that, <clears throat> you will have your Windows compressed or uh, your Citra compressed build, you're going to go ahead and extract that folder here and it's going to pull up your nightly build. Citra comes in two flavors. You have nightly and canary uh, to give you a real quick overview of what that means. Nightly is the most tested and stable build of Citra. Uh, it tends to not have the absolute newest features that are available. Canary has the newest features that are being released by the Citra dev team. However, uh, sometimes Canary can be more unstable. For example, uh, we now have Vulkan, which is a graphic API that has been released to the stable nightly version of Citra. This was released on Canary in May, but didn't come out on the nightly build until September 15th. So. Now that that is out, we're happy and uh, we're redoing the tutorials because of it. Um, but we're going to stick with the nightly build. Now, once you have extracted your Citra uh, folder to your desktop, you can move it wherever you want. You can keep that folder wherever you want it, but put the folder where you're going to keep it and leave it there. So if it's on a desktop, leave it there. If you're going to go put it in documents, leave it there. Because once you do, you're going to rename it and I'm going to name mine tutorial. And then you're gonna leave that folder there. We don't wanna move it because there are internal folder pathway files that get generated when using Citra and you want this to just stay there. Now, that said, you can move it on the desktop in and around wherever you want and that's fine if you're just organizing, but don't move it from desktop. Don't dra drag and drop it into another folder. Once you have named it and you've picked your destination, before you open Citra QT, you need to make two folders. This is very important that you do this before you open this application. You want the folder user and you want the folder games. These two folders will allow your emulator to be con entirely contained to this folder. So tutorial is now going to be the only folder that Citra has any files in. Once you have made those two folders, you can go ahead and open Citra QT. Now, once you have opened Citra, just to show, the user has generated, or the Citra has generated user config files um, that are now located only inside of this folder. So everything is self-contained. The next thing you can do is double click to select games. This is now your game registry. Once we put games in there, they will appear up here and everything is now completely contained for use for the emulator. This is the best way to run Citra and I highly recommend building, this again is called a portable build of the emulator. Um, this will prevent 
later on issues with um, crashing uh, corruption with internal uh, game files on your system uh, versus what's in the emulator folder. Things can get mixed up and then you can have corruption and crashing with the emulator. Um, all of that said, you're done with the build. There's a couple of internal uh, settings that we want to change first and foremost. In view, I personally like to use large screen. You can experiment with this when you get into game, but I'm going to go ahead and change that for the duration of our Citra tutorial overviews, just so that's there and done. The next thing that you're going to do is go to emulation, go to configure, and go to graphics. Now, the graphic settings here are going to be based on in-game specific settings, so we'll touch on that when we get to those videos. However, I want to start with Advanced and the Graphics API. OpenGL has been the standard platform for Citra for a long time. We now have Vulkan. Vulkan is a newer API, works much better on many different applications. However, sometimes OpenGL is still better. I highly recommend to start with Vulkan because it works with a lot of lower end systems. It tends to give higher performance with less powerful hardware and it is overall more stable than OpenGL is. However, if you're finding that Vulkan isn't performing well or your in-game performance is failing, feel free to switch it back to OpenGL. For the remainder of these videos, I will be using Vulkan exclusively. It works very well on my system. Uh, and I, I recommend you at least start with that to test things out because it's most likely going to provide the best performance. The last thing we're going to do, and I'm going to go ahead and make sure that my controller is plugged in with my third party software. We're gonna set the controls for all of the games going forward. Your control scheme is essentially a one-to-one -one of the Nintendo 3DS that I am mapping to my PS4 controller. So I'm not doing anything crazy or exceptional here. I am just repeating all of the D-pad, the A, B, X, Y keys in exactly the same layout as they are on the 3DS, mapping them to my PS4 controller. Now, there are extra um, controls that we can do with Citra that are very useful, which are the motion touch controls. I'm not going to be going into this into too much detail, but if you choose to configure this on your own, you're going to want to check use button mapping. And in configure, this screen right here is the touch screen of the Citra emulator. So the 3DS touch screen that it generates, this is that screen and say there's something on the screen that you want to have mapped to be able to click on your controller to click the touch screen you can click say it's in this corner over here um well actually we'll, we'll we'll let that despawn for a sec say you have something over in this corner you can click on that and then you can map a key to be that touch point so anytime you touch your control it will click there on the touch screen. Very useful tool. We're not going to set that up in this tutorial, but you are welcome to um, in any of your games. Go in game, pull up the, the Citra configuration, and then you can see what your touch screen looks like in game and map out what you need. For now, we're going to leave that as is. And this essentially concludes everything you need to set up Citra as default. These are your default settings. This is what you're going to use for basically every game. Your graphics API is Vulkan, your controls are set up, your view is ready to go. We're going to leave that there, and we're going to move on to the Monster Hunter 3U tutorial video. Um, everything that you need moving forward with extra information, um, performance codes, uh, textures, charms, uh, mods, and that kind of stuff, all other information that you may need will also be found in the description of these videos. Um, thank you for checking this out, and we'll see you on the next one.